a woman gets awarded 360 plus million dollars because FedEx discriminated against her according to the verdict. Judge steps in and says, ah, you know what, that's way too much money. Uh, we're going to give her uh, you know, 248,000. Yeah, that's, that's how we'll chop that down. Put it up full mass. To go from over 360 million to 248,000. In an update, a federal appeals court on Thursday threw out a $366.2 million verdict against FedEx in a case brought by Jennifer Harris, a sales manager who said the package delivery company fired her in retaliation for accusing her supervisor of race discrimination. So so previously, the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said the plaintiff, Jennifer Harris, was entitled to none, none of the 365 million of punitive damages that a Houston jury awarded her in October of 20 of 2022. It also reduced Harris's damages for pain and suffering, mental anguish and inconvenience to 248,620 from 1.16 million, despite finding a sufficient evidence to support her retaliation claim. Evidence was sufficient. FedEx said in a statement that it remains confident that it acted properly, even though everybody, including the judges, <laughs> you did not act properly. FedEx said in a statement it remains confident that it acted properly regarding the termination of Harris, um, her employment, and is pleased with the court's decision to reduce the damages. Harris's lawyers did not immediately respond to requests for comment. I'm going to give you a rem- reminder of the case. The award um, against Memphis, Tennessee based FedEx had been, been among the largest in the US workplace bias or retaliation case involving a single worker. Harris had worked for FedEx for more than 12 years, first as a sales representative and ultimately as a district sales manager before being fired in January 2020. She said her firing stemmed from her complaints about her supervisor, a white woman who had given her a poor performance review and who Harris alleged had tried to demote her. But the New Orleans based appeals court said Harris did not meet the heavy burden under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 of showing that FedEx acted with malice or reckless indifference toward her in the face of a perceived risk that its actions would violate federal law. Put up the circuit court judge who basically rendered a judgment based on opinion. Circuit court judge Wilson said the evidence suggested that the supervisor believed Harris should be disciplined for insubordination not in retaliation for her complaints. Um, the judge um, is a Trump, you know, judge. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, judges have this awesome power, this great authority to do such things. Uh, tort reform law created a lot of this inside of state courts in particular. Uh, and by extension, by proxy, some of our federal jurisdictions. Now, what is the judge saying? The judge is saying that damn what everybody else said. Based on the judge's reading of discriminatory law, the heavy burden was not met here. Disrespecting the actual verdict. Now, this person single handedly has reduced the debt to 248,000 that FedEx will owe her. And basically made null any opportunity to actually recoup real money for the suffering. Um, it, it, this is the state of our judicial system in many ways now. And I guarantee you, there's some connections with the business community, or let's just say commerce community, and this particular judge. There always is. And this judge decided to save corporate America. Um, 
was hell of a thing, right? I mean, and then the insult is to go from over 360 million to 248,000. He takes away the actual damages as they were calculated initially and brings that down as well. It's almost like he was working to get to a number already perceived in his mind he should be at. Yeah, it's and again to be clear, we see these big numbers get thrown around in these um, lawsuits all the time. When when uh, folks bring complaints against these huge mega corporations, and oftentimes they don't get anything near the number that they you know that they started out with, even though they won. Like we understand that, but generally we know. This woman would have probably got something in the tens of millions of dollars that would have made absolute sense and been in line with precedent. Because it's not just about the damages, um, both mentally uh, and sort of spiritually, if you will, emotionally. Uh, There's just the lack of employment, the loss of wages, um, the amount of time that it took. She has to pay for her lawyers. All of this stuff that needs to be paid back. And I think the biggest part is that it serves as a deterrent for future bad behavior. You know, um, if you 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 should not be treating your employees like this unless you want to be paying out tens of millions of dollars every single time when they take your butt to court, right? That's generally how this goes. But you know. Oftentimes, the little guy, even when they do do things the right way, they finally win in court against an army of lawyers and attorneys on the other side. It doesn't even matter because the game is so rigged against everyday Americans, Dr. Richie. They don't have relationships with judges and big old people um, within the system. Uh, And these corporations do. And this is just so obvious, right? Like that this guy has no credibility that he could render this kind of verdict. It's just obvious and it's just a shame. It speaks to the frustrations that many Americans feel that the system is rigged against them. Uh, There's no vote that they can take that's going to change this thing. There's no action that they can take and that things are ultimately hopeless. Even when you do win, Dr. Richie somehow. Yep. yep. And, and imagine how Trump supporters would be if this was Donald Trump on trial, right? Oh, please. Uh, oh, and and a judge decided to do it the other way around, right? To increase the penalty. Make it harsher. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. They, they would have a complete, complete breakdown. 